Hi everyone, I'm so excited to say that I'm with Amelia at Sanctum Wood School and we're going to be bringing Science of Hazel to the lab so we'll be showing you lots of practicals. Amelia is going to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Emilia. I am a lab technician. I work in this school, Sanctum Wood School in Cambridge. I am also STEM ambassador, which means I go in other schools to introduce science to the kids and we have a lot of fun together. I have also an Instagram page, emilia.science, and follow me to see all my experiments and videos. Yeah, you should absolutely follow me. Thank her. you. <laughs> In today's video, Amelia and I are going to be showing you the method used to make soluble salts. Now notice that these are salts which do not contain sodium, potassium or ammonium. Remember, you need to use the titration method to make those sorts of salts. However, we're going to be making copper sulphate, which remember is a soluble salt, and we're going to be using the crystallisation method in order to do this. Make sure you watch the method really, really closely because it's really important that you get every single step in the right order. Just so you know, the two reactants we're using are sulfuric acid and copper oxide. Together, when they react, they produce the salt copper sulfate and water as a byproduct. Anyway, over to you, Amelia. Okay, so first of all, we're going to uh, put 50 ml, 50 cubic centimeter of sulfuric acid in the beaker. And then we have to warm it up. Mm -hmm. So we're increasing the temperature of the sulfuric acid to increase the solubility of the copper oxide. Okay, so I'm going to add copper oxide until it doesn't dissolve anymore. Perfect. So I'm going to do a super saturated solution. Yeah, that's essential. We need a saturated solution in order to produce a salt. That is warm enough. Yeah. Otherwise, we don't want it to boil it. No. So we have our saturated solution. It's now essential that we remove the excess solid, the excess copper oxide, and we're going to use filtration to do that. So this is your typical setup, a conical flask with a funnel containing filter paper, which Amelia will now pour the solution through. See, it oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? That colour of the copper sulphate solution is it. so beautiful, so characteristic. So we've got enough of our copper sulphate solution now. We're now ready to do the evaporation part of the experiment. Amelia is using a clay triangle and using it to support an evaporating basin. And now she's pouring the copper sulphate solution into the basin. Notice here, you must evaporate only some of the water, not all of the water, some of the water. And Amelia tells me that actually affects the size of the crystals. Yes, you if, if you um, evaporate a lot of water, then the crystal will be very, very small. So you, you want to evaporate like one third of yeah. the water and then you put in the crystallizing dish, you leave it for one day, two days and you should have a nice crystal. Yeah, you must, that is the final step. You must leave the basin to cool, the contents to cool, and you must specify whether that's in a warm place, in a drying oven, or on filter paper. Don't just say dry, you won't get the final mark if you don't mention how you're doing the drying. So we've evaporated some of the water and now we can turn off the gas and we can pour the solution into a crystallizing dish. And then you leave it for one, two days. Okay. We leave it for one to two days. And then to show you something that we produced earlier, here are our finished products. The copper sulfate crystals are absolutely beautiful.